Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today I'm going to be talking about some romance books that I have been obsessed with recently. I just wanted a video where I could gab about some books that I just can't stop thinking about. <laughs> So this is my excuse to do that. Let's just get into it. This is the first time I've done a video like this. I know some of my friends have done a few, um, but yeah, I'm just gonna talk about some books that I have read recently or the past couple months that like are like my favorites that I can't stop thinking about. So first, can we just talk about Hannah Bottom Young? <laughs> she has absolutely like annihilated my reading mood because every time I read one of her books, like nothing comes close to it, nothing. It's ruining me because her books are so stinking good that I don't wanna read anything else if it's not up to this par. I love and obsessed with these three that I own. I do love her uh, holiday novella as well, but I read that one. That's the first book that I read by her and I read that last year. So I read these three this year and obsessed with all of them. So um, first I do have to mention Out on a Limb. <laughs> I got an arc of this book and I read it like a month before it released um, and I am obsessed with this book. It's my favorite book of the year. It is possibly in my new favorite book of all time. I feel like I have to read this book and then Radiance back to back and see which one I love more but I don't want to do that. I don't want to pin my babies against each other, okay? Anyway, um, I just got this copy in the mail and it is signed and it came with this stunning art print. I got it from the last chapter uh, book box and it is just beautiful. This is like one of my favorite scenes in the entire book where Bo is braiding Wynn's hair. Like I'm obsessed with this so much. Anyway, um, so Out on a Limb, my favorite book of the year. Definitely. This is about Bo and Wynn and they end up meeting at a Halloween party and they both have the same costume. They're both dressed up as pirates, but Bo has a wooden leg. He it has a prosthetic leg and so he makes a joke of his disability by being a pirate. And then Wynn does the same thing with a hook for a hand because she has a limb difference and she has an underdeveloped, a less developed hand. And so she always wears a hook for a hand for Halloween. They think it's so funny and they're able to connect over it because people at the party think that they're like in a couple's costume but they've never met before this party and they just get off on the best foot ever and they have amazing conversations between the two of them and this ultimately leads them to having an amazing night together okay but what they don't expect <laughs> is for Wynn to end up pregnant and when Bo hears that Wynn is pregnant he is all in. I'm gonna cry. He is all in for this baby and being a part of Wynn's life. Like, I love Bo with my whole heart and chest. I love him so much in the way he is there for Wynn. And you get to read about Wynn dealing with her self confidence in here uh, because she lives with a disability. I really related to her. Like, can she be a mother? Is she fit to be a mother? A lot of us have felt like that in our lives. So I just really related to her and the whole discussion of disability in here was absolutely beautiful, stunning, fantastic, beautiful, amazing. This book is like one of the best books I've ever read in my entire life for a reason. It's so good. The two of them move in together after they find out that Wynn is pregnant because Bo really wants to be there for Wynn and their baby. And he's like, come live with me. You don't live in a great place right now. Come live with me and we will make this work. Despite this starting out as a one night stand to lovers romance, it's actually one night stand to friends to lovers. This is definitely a friends to lovers romance, even though their first night together, they were together, you know? I love friends to lovers romances and this book like shows how beautiful friends to lovers romances can be. For those of you who don't love friends to lovers like this book will change your mind it'll change your mind it will and i could talk about this book for the whole duration of this video so i'm gonna put this down for now <laughs> then we have these two books which are part of her uh like same series i think it's called the next series um and uh oh, i love these i just bought these books because um hand bottom young just got picked up by a publisher and these covers are gonna go away and so i had to buy them before they went away because i'm in love with them i could stare at them all day long. <laughs> this is about Chloe and Warren. They both want custody of their respective siblings. So Chloe ends up figuring out that her biological mother just gave birth to a baby. 
and so she really wants to adopt the baby and raise her. And Warren um, is trying to get custody of his teenage brother, who is deaf. Both of them have like things in their like adoption process, I'm pretty sure or like custody process that aren't necessarily in their favor. Like Warren doesn't really have the best place to live and Chloe isn't really in a great spot financially. And so they, the company that they're with, recommend that they team up and move in together to help each other like fill in the gaps that they need to take care of their siblings. Um, They don't know each other, but they end up becoming roommates and living with one another. This is my first full length book that I read by Hannah and I absolutely fell in love with her <laughs> after this. Um, I loved the novella obviously, but like this is the first full length book I read from her. And Chloe in here was like everything to me, the way that she was able to care for her baby sister and absolutely take her in with open arms. Like I love just the discussion of that in here and everything else. This book was like phenomenal. I finally got to next to you a few days ago because Libby, my Libby, finally got the audiobook for this book and I loved it. I love this. So I finally read all of Hannah's books. This is the romance between Lane and Matt, and it's also a friends to lovers romance. Um, Hannah Bonham Young knows how to write a friends to lovers romance. Okay, she just does. Three out of the four books that she's written have been friends to lovers, and she knows knows how to write it. Lane and Matt are part of the same friend group. They do so much together. They spend so much time together. Then on Lane's birthday, she ends up drunkenly like buying this school bus and she wants to renovate it and make it into a mobile home of sorts. She wants to live in it. And she asks Matt for help. He owns a like mechanic shop with Warren from book one. And they decide to fix up this bus for Lane to live in. And throughout them like spending all this time together, fixing up this bus, they uh, may or may not reveal the feelings that they've had for one another. I love the discussion of anxiety and not feeling like you're good enough in this book. I really related to Lean in here when it came to like seeing all of your friends falling in love and having big girl jobs and big boy jobs and basically making their way in life like an adult should, but you feel like 10 steps backward behind all of them like oh my gosh I related to her so hard and she literally has an anxiety attack while she's thinking about this I'm like I feel you I've done that same thing girl like <laughs> you're not alone and I also just love Matt in here he is oh one of the sweetest men ever I am a sucker for my favorite men in romances are the sweet cinnamon roll ones Matt is the epitome of one he is like on the same level with Bo and Ren Berkman like you got you got to read about Matt but I just recently read this one and I fell in love with it and after I read it I was in a huge funk. I have not read a four star book or higher since this book because this book put me in a funk because I loved it so much. I don't know why books do that to me but when I love a book like every other book that I read afterwards just not up to par with the good book. Okay I had my Hannah Bottom Young moment <laughs> so now we're gonna get on to the rest of the books. Um, I recently read Mickey Chambers Shakes It Up by Cherish Reed with Brie over at In Love and Words for our um, Chronically Courageous Book Club. It's a book club that we put together to highlight disabled and chronically ill voices and the books that they write. This book was so good. We both loved it. Um, so Mickey needing some extra money. She works at a college nearby um, running the summer course for writing, but she needs more money because her hyperthyroid medication is very expensive. So she ends up walking into a bar one day who has like a help or interview happening sign and she interviews for the job and gets it. Um, but what she doesn't know is that the owner of the bar, Diego, is actually one of the students in her college course. So there's like a forbidden element on both sides. Diego is Mickey's boss, but then Mickey is Diego's teacher. So it's like doubly forbidden in a lot of ways. I love this Grumpy Sunshine romance. Like Grumpy Sunshine romance is real mean. Okay, they do. I love them so much and the banter between these two, a plus. Diego in here deals, I believe with like, he never explicitly states it, but this like social anxiety that make people believe that he's grumpy. He is in awe of Mickey. She's able to talk to everyone and anyone and is able to put a smile on their face just by talking to them. And he is in awe of this beautiful, stunning woman, but he's just like so grumpy to her at the same time because he doesn't know how she does it. He's like, how are you able to do that? Like, I would die if I had to do that. <laughs> I also love that Mickey is like reading Diego's work when he turns it in and she's like falling in love with this man's writing. She's like, he's a good writer. He's going to college later on in life because he never got his degree and he like really wants to to get his degree. So he decides to uh, start out with doing a summer writing course um, at the college. 
and she's like you would be a fantastic writer you're doing so well and oh and also Diego is a widower and I love like the aspect of this book revolving around him being a widower and Mickey just fully accepting that he used to be in love with another woman and he's still in love with her like he loves his wife um and he would never ever ever say anything bad about her whatsoever and Mickey's just like I want to fall in love with her too like let me be closer to her I want that I want that connection with you and oh it's beautiful. This book is beautiful. I read Catch and Cradle like a week or two ago. I have not stopped thinking about this book. <laughs> if you want a college sport romance, like you need to read this one. This is a sapphic one um, where both heroines are teammates on their college lacrosse team. Becca in here is the team captain of the lacrosse team and Hope is one of the players and they have been like crushing on each other for a while but there is a very large rule on the team about not dating players like players not dating each other but it comes to a point in smoke where they can't they can't help themselves like they need to be together becca is dealing with a lot because a few years ago she actually did date a teammate and the reason why that rule is in place now is because of what happened to her and this previous teammate and so she's very much struggling internally with whether or not she should date hope after what happened to her previous relationship i love hope in here hope has dyslexia and i love the discussion of how to survive college with dyslexia basically and i love the routes that she took to um make, be make better accommodations for herself she has a hard time reading textbooks for her classes and so her roommates will like voice record the text for her and um in like return she'll like make big treats or clean the apartment you know what i mean i love like hope's progression here with her self-confidence especially with her dyslexia um and and becca in here she's dealing a lot too with figuring out what she wants to do with her life which i really related to her like you're in college she's like a junior or a senior and she's like i don't like what i'm majoring in i don't want to do that anymore and so she's like figuring out that she has a different passion in life. And what do you do when you wanna change majors later on in your college career? Like, what does that mean for you? And oh, I love both of these women. Take It to Nobu by Elizabeth Stevens was like my whole personality for like days <laughs> while I was reading and after I was reading this book. I fell in love with it. It takes place on an ice planet that's similar to IPV. And like, oh, anytime you tell me that a book takes place on an ice planet, like an alien romance book, give it to me. Like, give it to me. I want it now. <laughs> this is the second book in the Severity Mate series by Elizabeth Stevens, and I do recommend reading them in order because you read about this couple in book one, and this book specifically starts where that one ended. And so you need to know what happens in book one in order to read book two, even though it is about a different couple. In book one, Kiki was injured very badly, and so she's been in this healing stasis pod for a while, and she doesn't know that she has been found by her fate and mate. Um, Kiki used to live on or was taken from this moon that uh, was home to a bunch of human slaves. The people on the planet that the moon was orbiting had no idea that these slaves were on this moon and she gets found and rescued by her fate and mate, but she doesn't know that. She hates all aliens because I think once every three years, I'm pretty sure some of the aliens who did know about the illegal enslavement on this moon would come and SA like a lot of the alien women. She has a lot of trauma and a lot of distrust with aliens in general. She absolutely hates them. So when she wakes up from her stasis pod, like on this ice planet, and she's the only human in sight, like she is terrified, but she's also learned to become like a warrior because of what she's experienced. She's like, I'm never gonna let an, a man, an alien ever do that to me ever again. And so she's had to learn how to harden herself and harden her heart. And so it's a little bit troublesome when this alien who basically rescued her is like, you're my fated mate, we're gonna live together forever. And she's like, not happening, dude. Like, no, 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 I don't know. You're an alien, not happening. And so he's trying to figure out like what happened to her and how to help her heal. Like he wants this woman to heal so badly, even if that means taking a step back from his own feelings and his own relationship with her. He's like, I don't care that we need to like solidify this bond between the two of us. I want you to get better. Like I want you to be okay with who you are and the people that are now around you because you're my fate and mate. Like we're, we're together for the rest of our life and I have time. I'm gonna be patient with you 
but I also want you to get to know my people and my culture. And I want you to fall in love with them as much as I do. Like, he is such a respectful man. I love him so much. I love seeing Kiki's growth in here. It's absolutely beautiful. If you love alien romance books, read this series. This book, um, the audiobooks have dual narration, essentially. So like when the hero has dialogue, the male narrator speaks, even when like the female narrator, that's her chapter. You know what I mean? I love those books. Um, the audiobooks, 10 out of 10. I finally read The Bridge Kingdom by Danielle L. Jensen recently, and I loved this. I honestly didn't expect to love this one as much as I did because I thought it had like no steam in it, which I was wrong. <laughs> I was wrong. There is steam in here. Um, but I ended up loving this one and book two, which is also about the same couple. Um, the heroine in this book um, is from a fantasy kingdom where her and her sisters who are princesses have been trained their whole lives to basically be a spy. Um, one of them is going to be chosen to marry King Arryn of a neighboring country that her father wants to basically take over um and marry him and be a spy take stuff from their country like information and ultimately kill like their their, their husband lara is the heroine of this book she ends up getting chosen or ends up getting the job of marrying Arin and becoming the spy of his kingdom and that's all i can really say <laughs> in here um there's a lot going on in this the audiobooks are like what sold this book for me like I think I listened to this book to and from Book Bonanza and I could not stop listening to it like on the way back home and the effects were just awesome and the narrators were fantastic. I really liked this. <laughs> like if you want a really good like enemies to lovers like forced marriage romance like you need to read this one and book two because this one like ends on a cliffhanger oh and if you have audible like an audible membership you can listen to these for free rain me end by kayla grassi is one i've been talking about for a while <laughs> if you love cowboy romances i really recommend this one our heroine in here um she goes back to her small town after being gone for a few years she hasn't been back since her younger brother ended up passing away um, she has dealt with a lot of grief surrounding her brother's passing, but her mother recently got injured and she's going to help her on like the farm, the ranch that they run. She ends up going with her dad to the like town country dancing bar <laughs> that also happens to have a mechanical bull for the night. Um, and uh, her younger brother's best friend ends up working at said bar and growing up he had the hugest crush on her like a huge crush on her and when he finally sees her again after all these years he's like um you gotta go ride this bull like come on let's ride the bull like he does it in front of everyone at the bar has like the microphone is like basically peer pressuring her to ride this bull what he doesn't know though is that she has a lot of trauma now being on bulls and like horses because of what happened to her brother and uh he doesn't know that though and she like goes off on him <laughs> afterward and he's trying to like grovel for what he did he's like i'm so sorry i did not know like something was going on please i am so sorry blame me i apologize i was in the wrong anyway so the two of them um don't get off on the right foot after seeing each other after all these years but man he is smitten smitten with her he's a cowboy he runs his own ranch with his family so this book deals a lot with like grief and growing from your grief and learning how to accept it as well um, because both of them are dealing with the loss of the heroine's brother and his best friend. And then his dad also recently passed. So he's having to deal with that as well. So if you want a good cowboy romance, definitely pick this one up. I can't really talk about this book all that much, but obsessed with Sea of Ruin. Like obsessed with Sea of Ruin, okay? Like I finally read it and I get why people love it. Okay, I understand now. This one's about Bennett who is a female pirate and she is trying to run away from her husband. And in doing so, she ends up into the arms of Lord Ashley Cutler, who is a pirate hunter. And she's like dealing with the fact that she's in love with these two men. Um, this book is very dark. A lot goes on in here. Trip warning for on page SA. So just like be aware of that. It happens multiple times. So um, I just want to make you um, but I could not put this audiobook down when I was listening to it. I could not put it down for the life of me. Could not. It's also just fed my parents of the Caribbean, a loving soul. I'm obsessed with that movie franchise, like utterly obsessed with it. And this fed my need for like an adult version, essentially. Not exactly. I would love an adult version of Pirates. Like 
I would love that. But this fed that like pirate mom and soul for me. I was obsessed with it. I could not put it down. I listened, it's like a 15 hour audiobook or even longer than that. I don't know how many breaks I took, but like, I think I read it all in one day. I could not put it down. We obviously have to talk about Lady Ruthless by Scarlett Scott. I talk about this book all the time now because I love it. Um, this is a historical romance where our heroine um, ends up getting kidnapped by the hero. That's the very beginning of this book. Her name is Lady Calliope and it's because the hero, Lord Sin, finds out that she has been the author of these very scandalous pamphlets. Um, basically talk about the sin of the sins of Lord Sin where uh, readers think that Lord Sin is writing this pamphlet about all of the debauched, scandalous things that he's done. He, like apparently, according to these pamphlets, he's killed people, he's slept with husband's wives, like he's done a lot of bad things. He hasn't done a lot of what Calliope describes in these pamphlets, um, but no one knows any better. Like they think that Lorsen is writing these, so his reputation gets like ruined and no woman will marry him and he needs an heir. So he ends up kidnapping her and is like, you're going to pay for what you did. No other woman will marry me. So you're gonna marry me. Like, let's just go have it. Calliope ended up writing these uh, pamphlets because she thinks that he murdered her brother. Like she is full on convinced of that, uh, but there is way more to the story. Um, and she has to agree to marry the man that she hates. So I was obsessed, absolutely obsessed with this book. Um, I love Scott Scott's writing because a lot of her books start in the middle of a scene and it flows so well. The tension between these two was like off the charts as well, like angst galore, like, cause they both like hate each other <laughs> um, because she thinks that he killed her brother and he hates her because she's been writing these horrible things about him and has ruined his name. And the last book that I have to mention is uh, The Butterfly Project by Miss Emma Scott. <laughs> I love this one. It's my most recent read from her and I can't stop thinking about it. Zelda and Beckett meet one night in New York City. Zelda ended up like moving very suddenly to New York in order to hopefully get her a uh, graphic novel published, but there's a wrench in her plans with like living situations. And then she finds out that the guy she meets that night at a restaurant, Beckett, like is short a few hundred dollars for rent in his apartment. She's like, how about I pay you the difference on what you need for rent for the next few months and in exchange you'll let me stay at your place with you just until I get up off my feet and like get my graphic novel going. So they end up becoming roommates in this tiny shoebox of an apartment, like tiny apartment. Um, and the two of them end up falling for each other, obviously. Um, but if like, this is definitely one of the like less emotional Emma Scott books that I've read. Um, it is emotional, don't get me wrong. Like the heroine is going through a lot of grief when it comes to her sister. When they were kids, her sister was kidnapped and killed. And she is definitely still grieving that loss. And the hero is going through some stuff himself in this book. So I love this book so much. I can't stop thinking about it, especially like, like they started working on the graphic novel together, which was so cool. And I love how they were able to work together and the forced proximity aspect in here, that, that left me hot and bothered. It was very good. Anyways, there you have it. Those were some romances that I'm currently like obsessed with. Let me know down below if you read any of these books or if you plan to. Um, and also let me know what books you are currently obsessed with. I would love to know. Um, if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me the, um, is there a pirate emoji or a skull and bones, whatever you find emoji <laughs> down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.